Five, four, three, two, one. Good morning. Good morning. Today is a Tuesday evening for us. Tuesday night. Wednesday morning for you guys. Yep. So yes. that means uh, tonight is Bible study. Seven o'clock uh, California time. We're um, actually going back to the book of Revelation. Right before the whole pandemic, we were going through the book of Revelation. And then we stopped, did Ephesians, and then we did Daniel. Now we're going to start off where we left off. Yeah. It's going to be good. Yeah. So looking forward to that, guys. I have to recap myself. Just kind of like get my mindset back where we were when we left off there. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'll be doing today amongst other stuff. I'm still doing a lot of preparation for my uncle's um, uh, celebration memorial. of life. Yeah, yeah memorial. So, uh, but guys, other than that, it's been a busy day, and uh, um, Johnny the Muppet was texting me all day, because he said it's messed up that we stopped our devotional for Phyllis, but not him. <laughs> what a weirdo. Aww. Aww, he loves his brother. No, he just likes bugging me. <laughs> oh. so um you guys know that i take all my paintings to get framed like whenever you buy something from from me that's framed it is made not only is it good art because it's something i did <laughs> you're so cute babe but you're getting like i feel like having gavino sign his frames because he's the greatest framer in he's, the universe. He's amazing. In the universe. See, this, here's the thing, right? When I say he's a framer, it's not like going to Michael's to the framing section and you find something that fits your thing and then you just <laughs> bend the little things in the back and put it in. I mean, he has these sticks and he will make a frame mm -hmm. for you out of scratch. Yeah. 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 Well, like for instance, you know, we when we went to Jamestown, or to uh, when we went to Sonora, and on yeah. our way back we went to Jamestown. But when we went to Sonora, we seen a little tiny like postcard, right? It was a G clay. Yeah, it was a postcard. But it was a postcard size. But it was a little G clay for four dollars, you guys. It was a four dollars and ninety five cents. Here's the back. Yeah. It says, that's her name. Mm -hmm. She's a local artist in the Sonora area, Mary Jean St. Clair. Mm -hmm. It says G. Clay of Original Oil. And um, so I bought this $4 G. Clay. It's called Out With Mama. Out With Mama. And mm -hmm. uh, we, hold on. Okay. So we took it to, um, to Gavino. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, listen, we got a really small G. Clay. We loved it. It's a local artist out of Sonora. And um, what can you do with it? Can you do something? Just just something. And he gets creative, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, we've been becoming so close friends with him. Obviously, I bring him business because all of my paintings get framed by him. So this is what he gave us. Ready? But, yeah. Mm -hmm. Look at that, you guys. Look how beautiful that is. It's so beautiful. Here's the beautiful thing that it actually, what is it called again, the glass? An anti-reflective glass. Yeah, it's Ultra View UV70 anti-reflective glass. Like, it, you can barely, like... In person, it looks like there's no glass. There's no glass, like, when you're in like person. You, here you see a glare because obviously mm -hmm. we have these, these big lights mm -hmm. on, but... But when you're here, it doesn't even look like anything's there. It's like so beautiful, you guys. Like the wood grain. And look at it. It's a mama cow and a baby cow. That's why I loved it. Because you guys, as you guys know, I love cows. But I was just a really, really blessed That's by That's a it. nice frame, too. He put our little certificate in the back. So we could put our little certificate here. This one? Yeah. See? That's what it is. It's UV glass. It's so pretty. I love it. So as soon as I saw it, 
I grabbed it because I knew she would like it. Mm -hmm. It's cool because um, this artist's paintings, her her regular size paintings are, <clears throat> you know, hundred two hundred dollar range, but she had these little and postcards. And I got this one for four dollars. Yeah, these postcard G clays, which is cool. And I was happy, and I'm very happy with it, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna just love it. Yeah. So. I'm excited about my little painting. Guys, we're gonna get in the scripture here. That's really good. Um, in First Peter chapter four, verse seven. Once again, you didn't tell me what we were doing. I know, but it's not like if it's something like super crazy. But this thing's super crazy. It's just super awesome. He doesn't tell me what's up anymore, guys. Yeah, but uh, um, other than that, guys, it's it's been a good day, productive day. We had salmon for dinner. That was awesome. Yeah. I put some salmon in the um, air fryer today. It was really good. That's all we needed, some salmon and a little bit of lemon. Yep. Okay, you got it? First Peter? Good to go. Mm -hmm. First Peter chapter 4, verse 7 through maybe 10 or 11? 11. 7 to 11. 7 to 11? Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay, check this out. It says, um, it says, but the end of all things is at hand, meaning the end is coming. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. And above all things, have fervent love for one another. For love will cover a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. As each one has received the gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 4 through 11. All right. I mean, 7 through 11. Everything in the world is about to be wrapped up, so take nothing for granted. Stay wide awake in prayer. Most of all, love each other as if your life depended on it. Love makes up for practically anything. Be quick to give a meal to the hungry a bed to the homeless, cheerfully. Be generous with the different things God gave you, passing them around so all get in on it. If words, let it be God's words. If help, let it be God's hearty help. That way God's bright presence will be evident in everything through Jesus, and he'll get all the credit as the one mighty in everything. On course to the end of time. Oh, yes. It says it like that, you guys. Oh, yes. <laughs> so, we're just, you know, we're going to talk about this a little at a, one at a time. I like how it says, in the, en the end of all things is at hand. And, and I think that, you know, people have said, are we in the last days? And I've always said, the last day started when, when the stone rolled away from the, from the, from the tomb. That's, that's, that's when, the, when the countdown began. You know, like when you have a stopwatch and you hit start. Mm -hmm. So we are in the last days because the last day started when he rose again. Mm -hmm. It started. Just like we all we all started to die the moment we took our first breath. Yeah. You know, death began. The moment the umbilical cord was... Yeah. So, yeah. but even more so than that than then, we're even closer. Now imagine if that's when it started. Imagine how far along we are now. So to me, this is relevant. Because we're talking about relevant Bible talk. Well, mm -hmm. it doesn't get much more relevant than that, guys. It says the end of all things is at hand. It so says, everything in the world is about to be wrapped up. Wrapped up like a burrito. It says, therefore, so it's like, in other words, when it says therefore, that means like everything he just said before. So if, if the end of the world is near, therefore, then do this. That's basically what he's saying. He says, therefore, be serious. And watchful in your prayers. Yeah. 
You know, so it's like, it doesn't mean like, well, you got to be all super serious or this and that, but your prayers, this is a serious thing that we're not joking with. We're, you know, it's, it's nothing to be playing around yeah, about. Don't take it for granted. Yeah, like it says there, right? Mm -hmm. Don't it says take here, no, don't take nothing for granted. Don't take nothing for granted. Mm -hmm. You know, and and um, the the I've always said this, and I've heard I ain't the only one that made it up, but uh, the devil don't sleep, guys. Yeah, he don't sleep. You know, we we get tired, we sleep, we have jobs, we do this, we do that, and the enemy is twenty four seven trying to bring destruction. So. If we can't be serious even in our prayers, you know, so it says be serious and watch when your prayers, but then it goes and so now it says something even more. It says, and above all things, have fervent love for one another. How did it Here say? it says, most of all, love each other as if your life depended yeah. on it. Wow. Love makes up for practically anything. You know, my dad used to tell me, he used to, he used to tell me and my brothers, because I didn't have any sisters, just me and three brothers. He would tell us, and we didn't like it, but he'd be like, someday me and your mom are, are not going to be here, and all you have in this world is each other. No matter what, all you have is each other, you know? And I transfer that to us, because if we are brothers and sisters in Christ, then we could easily say right now, is this whole world's against us. All we have is each other. Amen. The brothers and the sisters in this this fold, this huge family. That's why I always talk about, like when we went to Las Vegas, it was my first time going to Vegas. And and we met Josh and, and met his dad and I mean, just instantly embraced. And it felt good to be able to go to a foreign city I've never been in and, and to have family. Yeah. Because that's what it felt like. Yeah. When I met his pastor, when I met his dad, it was instant. Like, yeah. oh, you're your you're brother and sister in Christ. Come on. You, you hungry? You want some, some water? You want... mm -hmm. And that feels good because it's supposed to be that any of us believers, we should be able to travel anywhere in the world. And if we meet a fellow believer. Yeah, you know, you know it, it's so it's so true because we were sharing that with um, uh, with um, Braulio. Remember the, the, the other day how we talked about how we had went there. And it was crazy because we felt so out of place, but yet then we felt so in place with them. Yeah. You know, because we were there for, um, we were on our way to a gala and everybody was dressed in like gowns and, and, tuxedos. and tuxedos and everything. And I remember as we were walking towards the gala, There's you know. 10,000 people there. Yes, 10,000 people, you guys. And. You know, they were, the women were dressed up beautiful in gowns and everything. Like and the I, Grammys or something. Yeah, like really, really like fancy. And I was just wearing this really long skirt. You know, it, it was a nice skirt and everything. And I, and David was in a suit. And the closer and closer I just got there, something just, I just didn't feel right. And I was like, maybe I, I just felt out of place. And I was like, um... Yeah, no, let's let's just go. I told David, can we go, please? And he's like, are you sure? And I was like, I just want to go, you know? Let's... We had been in the seminar for days and days. But, yeah. and this was, And the last day was this gala. So they're like, everybody dress up. And I used to go to those before, guys. But for some reason, it just, it wasn't, I just didn't feel like I was fitting in anymore. And, you know, and then I, I wasn't looking. For some reason, it just felt like it became so... Much, much more extravagant, extravagant over the years, and it, I just didn't feel in, like I just felt out of place. And I just looked at him and I said, "Can we go to Josh's, you know, Bible study?" <laughs> and he's like, "Because yeah, Josh what? had said we 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 didn't even know him in mm -hmm. person yet, mm -hmm. and he had said he was well." He goes, uh, we have Bible study on this night. I'm like, oh, man, we have this gala thing. It's our last day of the seminar. Mm -hmm. We got to go. It would have been nice, brother, but I'm sorry. But I do want to meet up with you before we head back. Yeah. You know, and and we ended up walking out. It was at this huge casino. I forgot which one it was. Yeah, it was a, beaut it was a beautiful place. Everything was beautiful, guys. But 
we just as everybody was walking thousands of people were walking towards us we're trying to make our way out remember on the side we're on like literally walking yeah. on the side and we're walking out and i remember seeing people that i knew and she's like where are you going i'm like oh i'll be back you know i'm leaving <laughs> and we just we, and we bailed went, we went to the hotel to change huh? yeah no we didn't i didn't show up in there in the suit honey you just untucked your shirt out I you, thought oh, we went back to the room. No. Or did, that doesn't I, make sense. Why would I be in Vegas in a suit? That doesn't I make still sense. had my skirt and everything on. Yeah, but I wasn't going to wear a suit. I don't remember. I, there's no way I was going to wear a suit in Vegas. It was hot. Really? I don't Why? remember. I just remember I was in my skirt. No, I remember going to the room. Okay. There's no way. I'm so anyways, I know I was still in my skirt though, but yeah, well, it, it could have been. And then I just threw another yeah, little we jean. have it on video. Yeah, I threw a jean jacket on. But I remember that we just, we ended up going, we ended up leaving, probably went back, like you said, and then we just went to the Bible study. And we went there, and it was so humbling. It was just um, his dad, himself. His dad and his dad's friend. There's and his three dad, people. Yeah. And, yeah. and it was boom, awesome. felt at home. And I was yeah. just like, man, over here, 10,000 people, Kobe Bryant was there and all this stuff, and and we're in a Bible study, and like, I'm home now. Yes. You know? It, that... That was, was it for it was cool. us. It, it felt awesome. And then he took us to his church, remember? Mm -hmm. And we went to his church. And even more, we felt so much more at home. And they had a little food. They had a little bit of food mm -hmm. and everything. And we broke bread with them. Yeah. And it just it was just amazing, guys. We had such an amazing time. It felt really good. Yeah, and that's why, you know, it says, um, Above all things, have fervent love for one another. For love will cover a multitude of sins mm -hmm. you know and um i forgot how it says it on there but basically guys to be honest with you um i think many of us lack just as love makes up for practically anything yeah i think i think many times we lack that what it says there mm -hmm. like it's something to 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 say oh man i have love for that person but this scripture says something deeper it says have fervent love fervent love like it means continuous more than that yeah. fervent fervently is is i should have my amplified bible right there but I'm, you I'm, to look up the word fervent oh, my amplified's there but i ain't trying to get up yeah having to displaying passionately passionate passionate yeah. intensity yeah so very intense love for mm -hmm. one another you know and um that's a strong word for it. it says above all things have fervent love or passionate intensely love for one another for love will cover a multitude of sins and i believe that's that's very true you know a lot of times um you have to love somebody and, and to the point that it breaks them because they can a lot of, you know um People can be angry at you. And sometimes if you just argue back, it pushes them away. But if you love them through that, it'll break walls down. It shatters walls down, you know. And it says, uh, above all things, have fervent love for one another. For love will cover a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. Yeah. You know, the, the opposite from fervent is frivolous. Mm -hmm. And it's it's not having serious purpose or value. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when they when they say be fervent in, in, in your prayer and, and when they say mm -hmm. don't you know, don't pray frivolously, you know. It's like aimlessly. Yeah, aimlessly. And and that's that's the opposite of uh being fervent. Yeah. Is is frivolous, you know. We we don't be frivolous but be fervent. In, mm -hmm. in everything that we do. And then it says, be hospitable to one another without... Gr Actually, I've just said that, but I'm just reading it again. To be hospitable, guys. You know, to be open, to be welcoming, to be... Be quick to uh, give a meal to the hungry. Yeah, to one another without grumbling. Like, mm -hmm. not complaining. Mm -hmm. not, not worrying about it. You know, and, and it's like, we take care of each other. Mm-hmm. We should take care of each other. And I think we talked about it yesterday. There's times where where 
people not even realizing would buy us a meal after church, not realizing we didn't have nothing to go get something to eat. And there's other times where we do, and then we feed other people. And how do we know? They never said, how do we know? They didn't have money to eat that day. Yeah. You know, and that's just the way it is, guys. But after after service, honestly, yeah, um, whoever just kind of hangs around, you know, and doesn't go home, um, I'm like, who's hungry? Yeah, you know? let's go grab some. Yeah, who's hungry? You know, either we all pitch in, either or we buy, or somebody says, no, nah, it's all me, or... It's, we're all going to eat, regardless. Yeah, we all pitch in together, or we yeah, all help each getting, other out. Yeah. So be hospitable to one another without grumbling. And I like this, guys, in verse 10. As each one has received a gift. See, all of us have a gift. You have a gift. I have a gift. You know, Sharon has a gift. You know, we all have gifts. So the next part says, comma, minister it to one another. You know? I like the way it says here, um... Be generous with the different things God gave you, passing them passing them around so all get in on it. I like that. Yeah, and it's like that could be physical gifts or something you know how to do, or gifts as far as in the spirit. You know, whether it's it's, it's prayer, or or you know, prophetically have, or whatever it is. I have a really good example. Can What's I that? share it? I don't know. I have a well. I'm about to share. Oh, it. okay. So I just got off the phone with my sister and you guys know how we've been doing the, the prison ministry and everything. And she says, Hey, she goes, um, she goes, I know that you guys were, uh, were looking into, uh, you, uh, you guys remember that at one point somebody had uh, told us that they were going to donate, uh, an air conditioner system, but I think, I guess we misunderstood no, we didn't misunderstand. I, no, they misunderstood. Yeah. They misunderstood. They thought that we had an air conditioning system and that um, they that they wanted to service our air conditioning system and that we miss... At one point, we thought that maybe they wanted to donate an air conditioning system. So, guys, we did get excited and we kind of jumped the gun and we thought that they were going to donate an air conditioning system. But praise God, you know, I mean, if we would have had an air conditioning system, they would have serviced the air conditioning system for us. Um, but in these transcriptions that have been going out, um, I know on one of them, David had mentioned about it being hot and everything. And so my brother, you know, he has conversations with my little sister constantly and everything. Her brother that's incarcerated. Yeah, my brother that's incarcerated. As you guys know, he um, is doing a 25-year sentence. He's on his uh, 16th year about now. And uh, so she messages me and she says, Hey, uh, I, I, talked to, uh, I talked to your brother and he really enjoys reading all the transcriptions that you guys have. You know, he shares them with me every time when he calls me. And I said, really? And I, he says, yeah, he really, really likes them a lot. Um, he called me and, uh, and one of them, he talked, he talked to me about the fact that you guys are kind of going through some hardship with, uh, it being hot. And my sister's husband actually works for, um, for a really huge air conditioning, uh, company. So he decided to take it upon himself to go talk to my brother-in-law and somehow talk to him about talking to his boss about possibly donating an air conditioning system to us and talking, you know, and, and I guess somehow from the prison, he is making plans and saying, listen, maybe you can talk to them and you should do this and you should do that. So, you know, even from behind the prison walls, He's using his gifts of being able to reach. To try to make it happen. To try to make this happen. And it touched my heart, you know. And she says, you know, he's going to continue working on this and see what we can do. And we're trying to see what we can do. But for now, um, they donated a really big industrial, um, an industrial fan, a brand new industrial fan to you guys. And I was like, wow. So she sent me a picture of it. And this is in Southern California, guys. So we're going to somehow get it over here. But 
for now he he was able to get a an industrial fan donated to us you guys <laughs> all the way from behind prison walls but he's receiving this and he's using his gifts and and he was able to do this and you know it mm -hmm. just it's a it's a it's an example of that yeah. there you know as each one has received the gift Minister to one another. Yes. As good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Amen. And we had a lot of, you know, there's people that have that have gifts of, of carpentry, of, of yes. building at the church. All the, that's how we got the church fixed up the way yes, we did. Yes, so many people. People were, were um, not using, um, what would be the word? Using their gifts or... or administering their gifts. I guess. I mean, yeah, I administering their gifts. Tomas, Joe, yeah. Ellen, Abraham. But as each everybody. one has received the gift, minister it to one another. Yeah. You know, and that's the way it is at the church. Sometimes it's, there's always a mechanic there and he'll help people fix their cars. There's mm -hmm. a carpenter, there's an electrician. You know, there's always somebody that you can help somebody else do something. The women with their cooking and, the, yeah. you know, the cleaning, the this, you know, the that. Dale, Dale comes to me to help with his books because mm -hmm. he writes books. And I'm like, well, I know how to get them formatted. I know how to get the ISBN numbers. I know how to get it on Amazon and things like that, you know. So, um as each one has received the gift, minister to one another. You and, and Scripture says this, guys, real quick, little footnote. Any gift you have is not for you. Your gift is to share with others. Amen. Scripture says that. This is not, you can't argue this. Any gift you have is meant to edify and build others up. That's it. You know, so it's like, if I have a gift of preaching, it's not to me to build up myself up is to share it to build others up and vice versa so that's the way the gifts work in scripture um, and it says minister to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of god to be a good steward is, is somebody that stewards something if somebody leaves you in charge of something you got to be a good steward because then when that person comes you can show what you have done mm -hmm. you know you were a good steward if somebody says hey i want you to I'm going to go to Europe for, for the summer, watch my house. You know, to be a good steward is make sure their their lawns are watered. Make sure, you know, everything's paid. Every, make sure, every, you know, everything that is, everything is functioning. You be a good steward of what it is that somebody left you with. And you got to understand, guys, that uh, like for us, we're trying to be good stewards of God's people. Amen. Mm -hmm. Because God has put us in a position to speak life into you. So are we going to just do some just false teaching and just really dumb things on this channel? Or are we going to be good stewards with what God has put, it in put us in charge of doing, which is to have a relevant Bible talk? Amen. You know, and then the last verse. If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. And I know you're like, what does that mean? Here, does it say there? here it says, if words, let it be God's words. If help, let it be God's hearty help. Yeah. So in um, a different translation, I actually like it better. It says, if anyone speaks, let him speak as if, as if it's God himself speaking through you. Okay. So that's right after that verse of saying. It, oh, and it says that way of God's pre uh, bright presence will be evident in everything through Jesus. What, uh, go to the I think NIV. Switch it to NIV real quick. I think it's NIV that says it like that. Okay. NIV. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks in his words. Wait, each of you should use whatever gift you have received. Just 11. Okay. Just 11 the beginning. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God No, that provides. was it. That was it, okay. the first sentence. So if anyone speaks, let them speak as a speaking... You are speaking God's word, guys. So anytime you're giving somebody a word, you got to be careful because you're speaking for God. When you're giving a Bible study, when you're giving a prophetic word, when you're preaching, when you're evangelizing, and when you know when 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 you realize that, then you you know that your words have weight. Then you're going to be careful with your words. Because mm -hmm. if anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability 
with the which strength. with which God supplies. Yeah, right here it says with the strength God provides. Yeah, that way, and it sums it up in the end. It goes that in all things God may be glorified. Yeah, through Jesus Christ, to whom belongs the glory, because all glory belongs to Christ. Amen. All glory belongs to Him and dominion forever and ever. You know, so basically to put the whole thing in a nutshell, um, we got to understand that the time of the end is coming. And because of that, we need to be serious in the way we pray, in the way that, that we approach the Lord, you know, and, and be watchful and make sure that we love people fervently, guys, um, to be hospitable uh, and to use our gift to help others. And when we speak, to speak as if it's God speaking through you, you know, and um, I think that Peter, this is first Peter here that, that we're reading, and Peter obviously we know was very close to Christ, uh, he denied Jesus three times, he felt really bad about that, but he, he, but the Lord restored him, and he became a pillar of the church, he became a pillar of, of Christianity, you know, so for, for him to be saying, guys, time is coming, the time is near. So we have to make sure that we minister and we speak as if it's God speaking through us. Uh, and, and all of this, everything we do, is to glorify God. Yeah, that he's speaking to you and through you. Yeah, and Amen. to glorify, glorify the Lord. Amen. Yeah, so, all right, guys, hopefully that says something to you. Make sure you smash that like button. I forgot to say smash it in the beginning. It. Please, please do that. It helps the channel expand. The more likes each video gets, the more the YouTube, um, I always forget that dumb word that they use and how they do it. The algorithm? Algorithms, yeah. So there's not like somebody there checking our video. It's a computer system knows that if, oh, there's being likes, there's being comments, there's being this. So then they start to spread it to other, suggest it to other people that maybe like sermons or preachings or devotionals and whatnot. So... A lot of times, you know, so um, the more likes we get, the more our video gets suggested to people outside of our circle that we're already in. So, all right, guys. Nice. Thank you. Bye, guys. We love you. All right. Have a good day.